Hello everybody. So for today's secret prehistory, I believe is number eight, I'm going to be looking at the war between three different um, And the denotes of it, who also lost. So, there is this theory that goes around, and a lot of people say, oh yeah, when you have evolution, the new lot that's superior takes over and eventually wipes out the old lot. So should we, not, we should only ever have two types of humans alive at once. Because if, whichever the new one is, will eventually wipe out the old one, if it's better. Of course, there's sort of a test at some point as to whether it is better where they're able to survive and so forth and grow big enough numbers because you could have probably had other humans that were born that weren't better or else that were better but were caught before they could dominate and were wiped out so it's not quite such an easy one so how did we end up with three lots of life at the same time and with each other so the simple answer is that they evolved in different physical areas so we know with a reasonable degree of confidence that the Denosovans evolved physically in the area of Siberia in modern day Russia. Um, may not have been quite in Siberia, but the Denosovan caves are in Siberia, so we've got an idea there. Now, the Neanderthals were less certain where they evolved, but we know where they died, which was in the Neanderthal caves, also in caves in, in Germany. So, somewhere else. So in other words, the Neanderthals were a new version of Homo sapiens. Although Homo sapiens were 360,000 years old, so it would have had to have been something before Homo sapiens that then the Homo sapiens wiped out. Anyway, <laughs> but we, we ended up with, so 400,000 years ago we had Neanderthals, 360,000 years ago we had uh, Homo sapiens, that's the first version of Homo sapiens, the new version of Homo sapiens called Homo sapiens sapiens, which looks pretty much like us, is 160,000 years. So we haven't really changed much in the last 160,000 years. So I'll go over what we have changed. One is that we've got taller, and another one is that white skin emerged. So 160,000 years ago, every single person on the planet was black. And any time before that, everybody was black. So when we're talking about Neanderthals, we're talking about Denosovans, we're talking about black people. So they all would have been black. Um, however, of course, according to Sumer Sumerian beliefs, or Sumerian claims, they had Adamu who were red-haired. And we know that red hair is older than white skin. So at some point we developed white, red hair for some people. Uh, at a different point we developed blue eyes, green eyes, blonde hair, and white skin was the last one. So, but all those things happened in the last 20, 30,000 years, or they're about what we would think. Because the Sumerians say, oh no, red hair was 300,000 years ago. Was it really? I don't know. That's, but that's what they claim. Uh, and they claim that was called the Adamu, who we generally believe to be the Neanderthals. But if I want to take the language used in the medieval group, uh, the medieval mythology, if you like, there is no mention of that red-headed people and we're not even sure what we call the Denosovans but one hint is of what we might have called the Denosovans comes from the ancient Greeks who referred to different types of giants and they said predominantly they came from the far east and of course we're thinking about China, Russia, Siberia and that's where the origin of the giants are and we also know that Denosovans or at least the bones we found in the caves suggest we don't have a complete skeleton, but this suggests that they could have been nine feet tall or taller. Now, the tallest human ever recorded is, I think it's eight foot six, because there still might have been taller people that we just didn't record properly, so nine feet is believable. But they, they're suggesting they could have been nine feet up to 18 feet. It's 18 feet, that's pretty big for a person. But the theory is, this is an interesting thing, if you have a group that is isolated, in 
easy to cope with co um, area with no major predators and all that sort of stuff humans become shorter and we get what we call pygmies so pygmy groups develop all around the world and a number of the types of humans that were alive at the same time as each other but they were alive because they didn't, ice, didn't associate but the thing is if you're in Siberia it's not a nice little friendly island it's a harsh terrain it's very cold a lot of dangerous predators so in order to survive there you'd have to become big and strong so it makes sense that a giant group of humans and we're not sure again how tall they were exactly but that they would have developed in Siberia now of course we've got to remember the average height of people today is about five foot six for women and about five foot ten for men but the average height even 2,000 years ago was about six inches shorter than it is today and we probably were shorter again back then we don't know exactly how much shorter but let's say another couple of inches and um, why we we got taller recently we're not quite sure that's in the last 2,000 years we grew six inches on average but it could have been because there were harsher environments coming around so for people that are five foot tall someone who's seven foot would seem like a giant and so there's a chance that the Denisovans if they were called giants might have only been seven foot although the skeletons suggest nine feet anyway either way considered to be giants and there's a lot of recordings of giants um, the, the Bible says by the giants they had um, Goliath the giant it's David and Goliath and there's lots and lots of others from all around the world enough to suggest that giants were real and there's also mythology so if you go again to the uh, medieval mythology version and I'm just going to use that one because it gets complicated otherwise they also refer to ogres and trolls now we generally think of when we talk if, if somebody today is over six foot six they meet the legal definition of giant so if you're six foot six tall or six foot seven or six foot eight or more than that you are allowed to be called a giant now if you go to somebody and say hey you're a giant and you're six foot seven and they're six foot seven they generally take it as a compliment it's a good thing giant has a good reputation now on the other hand the legal definition for a dwarf is someone who's four foot six and under now, if you go up to someone who's four foot five let's say you say hey you're a dwarf they'll say get stuffed because for some reason dwarf is offensive I think it's just descriptive I think it's silly to refer to something that's descriptive as offensive most races don't care if you give a descriptive analysis of them but African Americans do get upset nobody else gets upset if you're descriptive about any other race any other ethnicity they don't mind but African Americans get upset and little people as we are to call them get upset if you talk about them being too short but suffice to, to say that when we talk about the myth mythological group dwarves who were a part of mythology we know that they were real people because we have them today and there is a suspicion that when we were talking about giants again that's just people who are over six foot six and whatever the definition was at the time might have only been six foot because people were a lot shorter then we know that the giants were around at the time but were they a separate group well were the dwarves shunned into their own little group maybe they were today they are to some extent or they self-isolate on purpose and there's their, their little little people group groups and that's what people tend to do if you if you tend to like to hang out with other people who are similar to you that's just what happens so <clears throat> but what if you called them ogres or trolls well ogres and trolls were also considered to be gigantic and a similar size to giants but not quite as positive so if you called somebody an ogre it would be an insult if you called someone a troll it would be an insult um, and ogres are generally referred thought of as ugly women trolls were ugly men and so were giants just the generic version or the better looking people we're not quite sure we could well be the all three were and we're not sure exactly how tall but we do know that they were real they were around at the same time as homo sapiens and neanderthals and in the same places we know that there are people who died whose skeletons have been found that were part Denosovan, part Neanderthal and these are prehistoric 
things from 30,000, 50,000 years ago. We know that there were part Denosive and part human, or part Homo sapien, I should say, but they're still around today. They're called Slavs. So if we talk about the war in Ukraine and you think, oh, they're just white people. Well, they're not. They're ethnic Slavs. There's Slavic people all around Eastern Europe. And they're a completely different ethnicity to Caucasian. And in fact, they do not consider themselves to be the same ethnicity or the same race as what you call white people. They're not white, they're Slav. Different. And if you want to split people up, you can split them up into part Neanderthal, which are predominantly, well, I mean, not predominantly, that's most people. <laughs> uh, part Slavic, oh, sorry, part, yeah, part Denosovan, which are Slavic mainly, and then pure Homo sapiens, which are Sub-Saharan Africans only, or southern two-thirds of Africa. Um, <clears throat> most people in the world are part Neanderthals. And when I say part Neanderthals, I don't mean 50-50. I mean like 4% Neanderthal and 96% Homo sapiens. So, and that's most people. And if you're not, you're probably Slavic or you're probably Sub-Saharan African. So check, are you Slavic? Okay, you're, you're part of those of it. Are you Sub-Saharan African? No, you're pure Homo sapiens, if you are. If you're not, you're probably part Neanderthal. So most of the people on the planet, somewhere around 80%, are part De Neanderthal. Some people have Neanderthal and Denosovan, but, you know, the Slavic people tend not to hang out too much, or certainly not to breed, with the people who are not Slavic. And the term Caucasian, of course, refers to the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia is a country very close to Russia. Um, so anywhere sort of west of that, you're Caucasian. Anyway, I digress. So could there have been a war between the three groups? Well, it's difficult to explain how there's only Homo sapiens left, considering that Neanderthals were older, but Denosovans were younger. And they were both superior in some ways to Homo sapiens. Neanderthals were smarter. I know that we say, oh, Domus and Neanderthal. No, actual, actual, real Neanderthals were smarter. We're the dumb ones. But possibly not as dumb as the Denosovans. We don't really know how intelligent they were, but they were certainly very tall. And, but there wouldn't have been very many of them. And according to, if you look at some biblical references, if you think of Nephilim as being the Denosovans, and being giants, they fought alongside people or sit alongside Homo sapiens against the Neanderthals. And that would explain how we were able to beat the Neanderthals. So for some reason we teamed up with them. And now this could have been a geographical thing. Because if we think of Neanderthals as being in Germany, I actually think starting off in India and creating that Bharat or Aryan Empire around Asia and Germany and Europe. It could have been that the Chinese held out and managed to stop them from taking their land and then the Chinese, that's not too far from Russia, may have sided in and brought the giants down to help them out. And so you would have had the giants merging with the people of China to fight against what we wouldn't have called them the Andalus. We would, we would have probably called them things like goblins and orcs which were believed to be real people. So they were quite shorter. And we know that Neanderthals were a bit shorter. Not much shorter, but a little bit shorter, a bit uglier. So we would have called, called them orcs and goblins. So we would have had giants and humans fighting on one side. And we would have called them trolls and ogres as well. But trolls and ogres are sort of like the ugly versions of, of giants. And up against the orcs and goblins and the orcs and goblins would have been the Neanderthals and that we would have defeated them. We would have defeated them by referring to them in these horrible ways. And now we have some idea that this happened because there's so much reporting in mythology of us defeating orcs and goblins and giants taking our side and helping us out. Sometimes we fought against ogres and, and giants and trolls as well. Perhaps because after we defeated the Neanderthals we then turned on the Denosovans and killed them too. And, and of course then we have this genetic memory. Anybody that looks like us but isn't us is scary for us. And that could be because the, the Neanderthals were so clever 
that they could disguise themselves to look like us. And so we'd see someone and say, hey, you don't look quite look human. And then, ha ha, we're not. Oh no. And so that would be quite terrifying. We also, we can't handle um, realistic looking robots or realistic looking dolls. Probably for the same reason, because that war may not have been a quick war. Yes, okay, it would have been, there would have been one phase of the war where they probably beat us. Then another phase where we got the giants and then the giants helped us beat them. But then they would have kept surviving and surviving and surviving and surviving. This probably, all the wars combined, may have lasted 70 or 80,000 years before finally we defeated them. We're never quite sure that they're really dead because there keep being a few survivors. And the last holdouts were only like 13,000 years ago in Germany. Goodness, can you imagine? 100,000 years ago we thought we killed them. They're still around 13,000 years ago. So did this war happen? I think it had to have. I can't think of any other explanation for all the other things that we know happen. Um, and we've got so much evidence of this in, the term, in terms of the stories and the different creatures, mythology that goes with it, plus of course the archaeological evidence. It had to have happened. Um, and that had to explain why we then went around and killed all these pygmies that were no threat to us. And why we have racism today why when the first white people emerged, people became scared of them and became racist towards them. Um, it had to be, I mean, this is the only, only answer that fits. Um, so yeah, I, I say it, it yeah, had to have happened. Anyway, that's it for me, bye bye now.